Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to discuss the relationship between the PhD student and the PhD supervisor. Now, if you are somebody who is doing a PhD or planning to do a PhD, you know that one of the most important and sometimes difficult relationships you can have is with your PhD supervisor. And I think this difficulty and this complexity happens because people have a complicated understanding of the nature of this relationship. So let us look at some models which are essentially there in people's mind about this relationship. And let us try to create a proper model as far as this relationship is concerned. Now, there are some people who have this teacher model in their mind and the teacher model comes from the fact that essentially the PhD is something you do after you have done a bachelor's or master's degree and in those degrees you had a certain relationship with your professor it was essentially based on learning from lectures in the class doing homework doing quizzes doing exams and then finally getting a grade so essentially you did the work and the professor gave you a grade and this relationship was generally very cordial if you were a good student and if you were a typical A student or a good student who went on to do the PhD, I would say that your relationship with all your professors at bachelor's and master's degree level was very good, it was excellent and so you carry this kind of baggage with you. And then you find that when you get into the PhD, the relationship seems to have changed. Now the second model is what I would call the family model and this is often embraced by people who come from small towns, sometimes people who come from developing countries or countries which were socialist in nature. They essentially look at the professor as an elder member of the family. So sometimes they can think like this is your dad or this is your uncle or this is your elder brother or elder sister as the case may be. Now what happens is that sometimes the professors will also let you have this kind of feeling because it does create a nice and cordial atmosphere in the lab. But the problem with this kind of thinking is that whenever the supervisor starts giving you trenchant criticism of your work, when he or she starts becoming harsh and this may happen in the second or third or fourth year of your PhD, you have a big shock because you never expected this kind of dressing down from any of your relations. So again, this is also a wrong model, I would say, as far as PhD is concerned. Now, the PhD supervisor is not your uncle, not your dad, not your brother, not your sister. In fact, having these kind of concepts can create a lot of problem for you because in case you really have a problem, let's say you are paralyzed for life, your PhD supervisor is not going to look after you, but your mom and dad still will and so on. So family is different, the PhD supervisor is different. So again, this family relationship is also not a good way to think about the PhD supervisor. Now the third model is a religious model. And this often comes from people who have been in religious societies or they are coming from traditional religious family. So they make some kind of comparison between the university and theological institutions like the church, the temple, the synagogue, the mosques, as the case may be. Now again, what happens if you consider the life of a typical clergyman or a priest? They often are part of a church, for example, the Catholic Church. And the Catholic Church takes care of all their needs. So essentially, these monks have places to stay. They have salaries and so on. So, And also, in many cases, these jobs are more or less permanent jobs. Once a person has made a commitment to become a monk or a priest in a temple or a maulana in the mosque, essentially, they are paid some kind of salary. They have a living quarter and they are there for life. Now again, you may think that the PhD supervisor is like this, but it's going to surprise you down the road because essentially the PhD supervisor has some aspects of this religious thinking.
but then it's not going to work out very well because unlike the institution of religion this is a very transactional relationship the relationship between phd supervisor and yourself and it is based on the output you produce and so on so i would say it's not really a good idea to put this in the form of a calling or a religious institution because that again comes with a lot of complexities for you so finally how do you look at this relationship so i would say that in the modern world the way to look at this relationship is like a corporate relationship and essentially what is happening is that you are providing your research labor to the university and your phd supervisor in return for this labor you are getting a stipend now the fact that you get a relatively less stipend is because you are essentially learning so you can think of yourself as an apprentice and the reason you learn in this way is because research is very hard if not impossible to teach through lecture medium research is typically learned by seeing a person who is doing research and then trying to follow his or her guidance about how to do research so that's how research is done so essentially this is a very corporate type of relationship except that you are still in the process of learning so it's not very different than if you were to join a company especially a startup and you would have a boss and this boss would essentially train you in the art of doing some aspects of research which would make you a productive member of that company so essentially this is something which is going to free you look on this job as a corporate relationship look at your phd supervisor as a boss keep in mind that this is a temporary job with relatively low pay where you are getting trained use the tuition reimbursements if you are getting them to take a reasonable amount of courses improve all your communication skills in writing and speaking and of course you are earning your pay by writing papers and finally by writing thesis by making presentations at different conferences sometimes you may also have a job of grading papers for bachelor degree student or you may be a ta in some class or you may be an ra in some project but all these are essentially functions where you are providing labor in return for money so keeping this kind of capitalist mindset is going to free you from all the previous three mindsets i discussed before which were like treating it like a family or treating it like a religious institution and so on and it's going to suddenly help you have a better relationship with your phd supervisor and also keep in mind that this being a temporary job with low pay you should try to get out of this as soon as possible complete your phd and get a better higher paying job and finally get a permanent job if possible either in the university research lab or the corporate sector so this was my take on the phd and phd supervisor relationship models and i hope it will help you in figuring out how to manage this relationship so both of you are more productive and you do not have illusions about this relationship so i'll end this video here and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then